Ooh. Lips. What's that? Something to crave. Hmm? I'm about to be on my last bit of supplies. I hope this is worth it. Incautious driver. Is that... No, it's slightly different from the one I crashed into. Give the order for half rations to eke out the last of your supplies. Okay. Oh, I can dock. Okay. Trade them munitions or supplies. I cannot do that. Settlers who live so far beyond the edge of civilization relish the hardships of solitude. They will fiercely defend their small territories, but occasionally welcome company and trade. You sit down beside a pockmarked homestead with a holy roof and cracked windows. Its inhabitants have struggled through a bad year and will find the next one worse. Yeah, so I can trade them st some stuff or leave swiftly. I don't have anything to actually trade, though. This? How much does it cost? You need a supply, so just one. Yeah, supplies are like, what, 40, 50 sovereigns? And bronze wood at that other place was going to cost, like, 170, I think? So, this would actually be an amazing trade to get bronze wood for supplies. But we are going to leave. I do not crave any of this. Your terror has reduced. Cool. So supplies will go down a little bit slower now that we're on the last bit. Apparently, because of half rations. I don't intend to have all my people starve on our first outing, though, so... We really are going home. Hmm. Gonna hope I can find a way through down here to, to New Winchester. down there. Oh, it's attacking you, Scout. We're fine. Oh, it's so beautiful here. I'd find it more beautiful if I wasn't close to dying. Okay, this is really not working out. Wow, I thought it would just, like, hook around here, go over to the side, but nope. I am going to spend a lot on a scout. I hope I don't regret that. Okay, uh, that's something grave. Oh, there's a station down here. Okay, we'll be fine. I will check that grave out later, not now. Yeah, this is so gorgeous. They look sort of like fireflies, but I'm sure they're not. Whoa, what is that? What a cool creature. I'm gonna dock with about 20% supplies remaining. Oh, it's Port... That's Port Avon. Wait, I'm sorry. What? Ha hmm? How is that east? I mean, I know it did say that east and west and whatever don't really mean anything out here. That cartographers just use particularly bright stars to orient themselves. And they just kind of wanted to recreate the familiarity of east and west and whatnot, but I, I thought that I would still be able to use this, you know, this being north, that being east, and whatnot. I thought it was made so it was familiar. I... Huh. Ah. 
Behold, a ruin of giants, gargantuan blocks jigsaw together, furred with moss and whispering with orchids. A bucolic village nestles among them. Smoke coils daintily from the chimneys. A leisurely game of cricket unfolds on the village green. Disembark. A ramshackle dock juts into the sky beside a farmyard scattered with rusty locomotive parts. Plating, piping, a chugging motor with its innards exposed. An oily-faced black-haired girl waves your locomotive in a position. Welcome to Port Avon, she calls as you disembark. A rich knot of sense greets you, leaves and wood smoke, enriched by an infrequent but pungent intrusion of goat. Port Avon welcomes new visitors, but your novelty will wear off the more time you spend there. When you visit in future, you may need to bring something to keep them friendly. Whoa. If they're not friendly, what does that mean? Are they going to chase me off the place with torches? Let's get a port report. Were it not for talk of smugglers and sky beasts, you could easily confuse this place for a village on the world you left behind. It's quite peaceful here, apart from some fuss over a newspaper delivery. The villagers frown and change the subject when you ask about it. Port Avon spills prettily across sections of colossal drifting ruins. Its orchard, orchards, its orchards bask in the evening gold light of a distant nebula. As exploring Port Avon will wear down your welcome, here you can restore it, allowing you to stay longer. You can like share gossip and host a tea party aboard your locomotive. Sounds nice. What do I need? I need a caddy of dried tea. I need tea for a tea party. Yeah, that makes sense. Recruit a repentant devil. The hell? I, I just want to make sure I can buy what I need here, right? Bronzewood. Oh, wait. Is that... Oh, oh, this is a prospect. This is an, Yeah, this is a bargain available. This is a prospect, which means I think I did have that prospect for bronze wood, like I thought. Yeah, so I can get them for like 170 at the circus area and sell them here for almost 300. That's a lot of profit. Cricket season is nigh, Mr. Sharma of Port Avon. will pay for five because I've already read this. Yeah. Port Avon lies to the south southeast of New Winchester. Okay, I just must have written it down wrong then in my notes. East of New Winchester sells seeds. Yeah, I just wrote it down wrong. Okay. Okay, I came here for the verdant seeds because I need them for a prospect, but I also need supplies or we're literally going to starve to death. So... A jumble of... Undistinguished souls. Just, <laughs> just random souls. The bottles are as ordinary as the souls that coil inside them. Is that sarcastic? I mean, the bottles look pretty ordinary, to be honest, other than being colored. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I can't buy seeds and sell them or do anything like that if I don't have supplies to live to get there, so I need to buy supplies. Just buy one for now. Thankfully, these are pretty cheap, but I can only buy two. I guess I'll go ahead and buy two. So I can make some profit. Back at... Oh, actually, wait. Back at what? I haven't actually been to the place where I need to sell them. I need to sell them at Magdalene's. Assuming I haven't written this down wrong as well. Magdalene's is north-northwest. Yeah. That's... Hmm. If I don't know where it is, it could be anywhere out there. So I don't want to kind of take a bet and just travel out there with one supply. I can't do that. 
No, I gotta I gotta spend my money on supplies. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go back and buy more. And maybe another fuel? Yeah, fuel's a bit cheaper. Let's oh, I can't even afford that. Two fuel or one supply. Okay. Uh, one supply, I guess. I think I have to go back to New Winchester to turn in my port reports to hope to get money. Because if I can't buy anything, then I can't earn money through trade, right? Or I can dump off... <laughs> dump is a bad term. Um, I can deliver my passenger to their destination somewhere. They want to be delivered to Port Prosper, which according to my notes is north-northeast of New Winchester. Also, have not been there. Well, Circus is kind of close to it, I guess. Hmm. Oh yeah, and then we do have that other person, actually. The Sky Madden Captain, which needs to go to Magdalene's, which is where I need to deliver seeds that I can't afford. Hmm. Hmm. Can I even afford to recruit the Repentant Devil? No. Oh, they cost a hundred. Look at those eyes. Offer him a berth. He's repentant. There can be no harm. <laughs> so how does this work? The village green... Is it like exploring each one of these things is going to reduce my welcome? the village green. A golden nebula scintillates above Port Avon's apple trees, allotments, eel fishers, and steepled church. Here you may, if you choose, immerse yourself in the village's quaint rhythms. The heart of the village surrounded by orchards of real apple trees that were shipped through the avid horizon as seeds. Actions here will wear out your welcome. Okay. Take a relaxing stroll. That's the sort of thing that probably reduces terror. I want something that's gonna give me resources, ideally. Bother Ridge's A Tour of Heaven describes Port Avon's single public house as a welcome respite, justly famed for its authentic old earth cider. The locals can be welcoming for a while. You may be able to recruit more crew here. Port Avon's first public house stands amidst a nodding copse of apple trees. Inside, brass gleams cozily on the beams. Window latches, doorknobs, and other fittings retrieved from the first locomotives that carried people here. A great polished wheel hangs on one wall. Appreciate an amount of cider, read a work of speculative fiction, speak to a short-sighted cryptozoologist. <laughs> Intercede in a mushroomy matter. Head upstairs. My god, there's so much I can do. Intercede in a mushroomy matter is unlocked by having no Blemigan... Blemigan voyagers. Hmm? Ah, this takes iron. So only 27% chance of success because my iron is pretty poor. It's pretty cheap, but... No, I... Mm. Careful now, a local warns you placidly. No, I don't want to risk getting drunk and messing everything up. In the nook by the fireplace is a shelf of magazines. Each contains a story by the local author, the Turbulent Fabulist. The Fabulist's work has been accepted in a number of publications, including Murgatroyd's Miscellany, Hearth in Heaven, and The Seasonal. He is prodigious. Which story catches your eye? Vacant throne, a corpse at the window, the parson's cook pot, the devil's confession, bones in the well, the eyes of heaven. Bones in the well sounds nice. On the third day, it rained. The sky was a great, drizzly circle in the well's mouth far above. The rubble underfoot darkened, then swam with mud. 
Perhaps he would drown today, Joseph thought. A slow way to die, he remarked to the skeleton that shared the well with them. Raindrops tip-tapped on its skull. The skeleton was a good listener. Joseph had already shared all his secrets with it. All, that is, except one. Now holding on to that last secret seemed pointless. After all, he was likely to drown before dinner time. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> it was I who pushed you, he confessed. <laughs> terror remains unchanged and you've gained a tale of terror spooky spooky scary skeleton this sounds cool speak to a short-sighted cryptozoologist actually mm. Mm. I do want something that's going to give me resources, and this probably won't. Eh, whatever. She perches on a stool in the corner, staring at a map of the Reach. I could have... No. Must have taken a wrong connection at New Winchester. A tiny figure weighed down by two backpacks and a heavy duffel coat looks through thick glasses at her map and then up at you. Excuse me, I need passage. I don't suppose you could help me. I'm on the trail of unusual beasts. I can pay you for your time. <laughs> if you have money, you are welcome to come aboard. Please pay me. Well, they're not going to pay until I get there. <sighs> Lustrum beams the short-sighted cryptozoologist. She leans in conspiratorially. Then, realizing that she's whispering to one of the inn's wooden beams, leans over to where you actually are. <laughs> I hear there's a curator who lives there. With the people. Mr. Pennies, I've always wanted to meet a curator. Just safely. Mm. Short sighted cryptozoologist almost boarded someone else's locomotive. A kindly stoker guided her the right way and on to yours. Aw. So you want to go to Lustrum? I have no idea where that is. Hopefully, we'll come across it. That happened in Sunless Sea quite a bit, too. You take a lot of people on board and they wanted to go somewhere and you didn't know where the place actually was and you'd have them on board for a while until you finally found it. Intercede in a mushroomy matter. Hmm. The pub is out of scrumpy. The pub is out of scrumpy? What does that mean? The barman blames a creature, a cross between a mushroom and a jellyfish. It sways in its seat at the bar. I don't know what Scrumpy is, but yeah. Oh, look at it. Oh, that is really cool. Heck yeah, I'll, I'll defend your honor. Who does this creature belong to? Bellows a man, fuchsia with rage. The blemigan he points at is a grizzled member of its species, most of whom were left behind in the neath. The fuchsia gentleman roars in fury. Between Bellows, the truth emerges. The blemigan is no one's pet. And, far worse, no one will admit responsibility for its tab. The Blemigan is unconcerned with the tumult. It nods its cap at you with grim respect, then flops a tendril into a mug of stout. It stares bleakly through the window. Aww. <laughs> I love that it nods its cap at you, but it's not wearing a hat, right? Its cap is just its head. Or above its head. Oh, I can settle its bar tab if I had enough money, but I don't. This will give you a mascot that raises your iron by two and your mirrors by one. I would have loved this Blemigan as a mascot. I'm so sorry, I can't. I, it's literally not possible? <sighs> Leave the matter well alone. Sorry. The Blemigan drinks serenely while squabbles continue above it. This is, of course, a problem for someone else. You can always drink cider. What are the Cyclopean ruins? What palace was this? What giant king made his home here? And why did he abandon the vast stores of souls that the locals still quarry from beneath the stones? Perhaps you might risk a furtive excavation of your own. 
Sure. Let's go to the ruins. Not one of the looming stones is quite square, yet they all slot together immaculately. Conduct nocturnal excavation. Hmm. Enjoy the picturesque surroundings. Yeah, this is the one I have by far the most chance at succeeding, and that's because that's my main skill. You unlock this with ten... Oh, you needed five crew. You need five crew to do that. Oh, I guess you need people to help you excavate. That makes sense. Let's do it. Port Avon's chief export is souls, quarried from vast stores entombed within the ruins. You'll need assistance, luck, and discretion. The locals would not approve. Yeah, some, <laughs> some foreigner comes in here for the first time and just starts excavating souls from their ancient ruins. <laughs> That's uh, not cool. But also, exploration. Ah. All night you dig, prying up vast stones and peering into the dusty cracks for any sign of souls. There's nothing. Perhaps they were crushed. Perhaps other miners got here first. You're wearing out your welcome. Yeah, do I have any welcome left? I guess I have one left. Oh, right, I could try to do it again. Hmm. What else can I do? Let's try something else. In the village green, let's visit the allotments. In fenced plots across Port Avon, or even Avon, Avon, grizzled horticulturalists tame the rampant vegetation of the reach. That requires mirrors, which we have 51% chance of success at, because our mirror skill is pretty good. Yeah, our best is veils, and then next best is mirrors. Ah, oh, two failures in a row. A disturbing specimen. Here a goat grazes on a bush whose leaves spiral like corkscrews. A harass gardener hacks at weeds then that look like a knot of melting snakes. Another gardener hurries over and presses a bulbous cutting in a clay pot into your hands. Uh, here, you have it, he mutters. I can't abide its singing. The plant, green, noduled, trills mournfully. Hmm, creepy singing plant. It's an uncanny specimen. You're no longer welcome in Port Avon. You may be able to become to become so again at the dock. And we just gained a bunch of terror. I mean, three is just three percent, so that's not bad. The stairs of the locals have grown sullen. They won't even give you the time of day anymore. It is suggested in firm and explicit terms that you had best be on your way. Okay, so just to keep in mind, if I want to come back here and actually do anything... Well, actually, hold on. Yeah, so not being welcomed here doesn't actually stop me from, like, using the shops. So I can still trade, I just can't do any of the story stuff. Which is worth keeping in mind. But yeah, if I want to make things... Better, then I'm gonna need salon stewed gossip and a caddy of dried tea. I'm sorry, what is this unlocked when Port Avon's character is preserved like a fly in amber? What? Port Avon's character, like the character of the city? The character of the place is preserved? Does that imply there's something I can do, like some secret that I can crack open that would, like, shame everybody in Port Avon? And then I wouldn't be able to do this anymore? It's interesting. For now, let's leave. Okay, um, well, I have a little bit of supplies. Um, yeah, a decent amount. And I have some port reports, so I can go turn that in for some sort of money or something back at New Winchester. I don't know how much. I do want to check out the something grave. Let's go back there. I 
I wonder if doing the dodge takes up extra fuel. 57, 56. 55, doesn't seem like it. Go check this thing out. Hey, I hope you're not dangerous. Oh, 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 oh. Is it not pursuing? I, th I think it isn't. Okay, we're good. That hurt a little bit. I mean, I'm not really angry at it. I did sort of aggressively approach it. It just seemed like it was defending itself. What is this? Cuddle's comb. Oh. Oh, investigate a, a spider signal box foggy with webs. Once it was part of the Isambard line, an old folly. Okay, hold on. There's. Is that an enemy? What's going on up here? Eh. It's off the screen. An abandoned signal box. The signal box is shrouded in gray. Close up, you see that the box is covered in delicate webs studded with cocoons. From the blue and white pattern of one bundle, it appears a spider has trapped a teapot. <laughs> Inside, beneath a desk covered with rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captains in dire need can borrow from the cash inside, but custom dictates they must later replenish it. Hmm. Oh, this is cool. Raid the cache. I mean, I'm not that desperate, right? This may mean enemy aids enemy, rival succors rival. Better that than bad luck. Oh, talking about how, yeah, if you put supplies there, then you might be helping your enemy. But also, you're probably just as likely to be helping a friend. I don't think I'm quite that desperate. Although I'm not doing great. Read the ledger. Captains who withdraw from the cache should note their name and ship and what they took. Occasionally they add anecdotes. You will gain a vision of the heavens or sky stories. Let's do that. The handwriting is poor but legible. Captain MacDonald Ross deposited materials for hull repair. There's a column for miscellaneous notes. Captain details various damages done to their engine and the causes. Hole, aggrieved, cantankery. Backplate, bad launch off Port Prosper. Frontplate, bad landing on Port Prosper. <laughs> Hole again, Jones. A change in personnel gives the captain optimism for the next leg of the journey. You've recently read the ledger. More time must pass before there will be any new entries. Yeah, that makes sense. Recruit a fatalistic signalman. You detect a whiff of cigarette smoke as you enter. A man in a gray uniform and gray bowler rises from a chair. Evening. Don't suppose you're looking for a signaler? He does not sound hopeful. How long has he been waiting here? The fatalistic signalman is an officer. A signaler who increases your mirrors by six, veils by two, and villainy by one. Ooh, villainy. Hmm. Hmm. Do you cost money? Oh. Oh, that actually was recruiting them. Okay, that's fine. I think I wanted them anyway. He's startled by your response. Oh. Right. Was expecting you to say no, to be honest. You ask what he was doing here. I work the Isambard line. I'm the last one, I suppose. Hitch rides between the boxes, make repairs, sweep up a bit. But I could do with a change of scene. He seems unsure. Well, uh, I'd better get my things together. He picks up a modest hold all and checks his hat is on his head. Yes, I think that's everything. After you, comrade. Oh, I think that's the first character to actually use my... my title, comrade. 
Okay. So it gives me a little bit of villainy for some reason. But that's fine. I mean, like, my character is a revolutionary. I'm not too worried about making sure that, uh, you know, major, major, like, powerful groups like me. So if they see me as a little bit villainous, that's fine. Let's appoint them. Yeah, six mirrors, two veils, affiliation, villainy, and and plus one gloomy guidance. <laughs> okay, and yeah, actually that's perfect for me. I mean, that's my main skills, veils and mirrors, and there you go. This one, hearts, iron, not really my main skills, but, you know, getting your other skills up is not bad either. Yeah, I can't seem to appoint him for some reason. I think this little icon here means they're appointed. Obviously the chief engineer is, but with them, I can't seem to do it. I could just talk with them, but that's not appointing. I'm not sure what's up with that, but I'll figure that out some other time. It's not that big of a deal right now. For now, let's head back to New Winchester. Should I go back this way to try to find new stuff? Yes, I should. Absolutely. A new smell behind the coal and the oil. The green, unlikely scent of apples. Yep, we're back, back to Port Avon. There might be a way through here, I'm not sure, but I want to keep going over here. Hopefully there's a way there. 